Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Welcome to Santa Maria Goretti Parish. Please all kneel and let us pray the Holy Rosary. We offer this Holy Rosary for the continued recovery of our country and the world from the crisis brought by the COVID-19 pandemic. For those who lost their jobs and those who struggle in their livelihood, for good governance in our country and in the world, for peace in the world where war and violence exist, for the sick, especially those afflicted with COVID-19, that God may give them strength and full recovery, and for the eternal repose of our dearly departed, especially those who died from COVID-19, and may God console their grieving families. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The five joyful mysteries. The first mystery is the Annunciation of the Angel to Mary. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. 
Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us of our sins. Save us from the fires of hell. And lead all souls into heaven, especially those in most need of your mercy. The second joyful mystery is the visitation of Mary to St. Elizabeth. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. And blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, 
the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Glory, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us of our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls into heaven, especially those in most need of your mercy. The third joyful mystery is the Nativity of Jesus. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us of our sins. Save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls into heaven, especially those in most need of your mercy. The fourth joyful mystery is the presentation of Jesus in the temple. 
Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. O Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. And blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. And blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Glory, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us of our sins. Save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls into heaven, especially those in most need of your mercy. The fifth joyful mystery is the finding of Jesus in the temple. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, 
Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us of our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls into heaven, especially those in most need of your mercy. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy. Hail our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To you do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To you do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious Advocate your eyes of mercy toward us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of your womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. O God, whose only begotten Son, by his life, death, and resurrection, has purchased for us the rewards of eternal salvation. Grant, we beseech you, that meditating upon these mysteries of the Most Holy Rosary of the Blessed Virgin Mary, we may imitate what they contain and obtain what they promise through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. For the intention of the Holy Father, our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Mary, Mother of God, pray for us. Saint Joseph, Pray for us, Saint Padre Pio. Pray for us, Saint Ezekiel Moreno. Pray for us, Saint Martin de Porres. Pray for us, Santa Maria Goretti. Pray for us, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated.
Good afternoon, dear brothers and sisters. Welcome to our celebration of the Holy Eucharist. We offer this Holy Mass for the thanksgiving of our donors and sponsors, for the eternal repose of the souls of our dearly departed, for the healing of our online and in-person parishioners and their caregivers, for those who are unable to go to church physically for various reasons, and for all other intentions offered in this Eucharistic celebration. Today is Palm Sunday of the Lord's Passion. Our Mass presider is Reverend Father Jason La Guerta. Please all stand. O sana sa anak ni David, Hari ng Israel, Pinagpala ang naparirito, Sangala ng Panginoon. O sana sa kaitaasan, sana sa kaitaasan. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today, we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery, that is to say, of His Passion and Resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that He entered His own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in His footsteps, so that being made by His grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in the resurrection and in his life. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing, that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. 
Glory to you, O Lord. When the great crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, they took palm branches and went out to meet him and cried out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Jesus found an ass and sat upon it, as is written, Fear no more, O daughter of Zion. See, your king comes, seated upon an ass's colt. His disciples did not understand this at first, but when Jesus had been glorified, they remembered that these things were written about him and that they had done this for him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Sinisimulan natin ngayon, mga kapatid, ang mga banal na araw, Semana Santa, the Holy Week. We begin with the celebration of the Palm Sunday of the Lord's Passion. Dalawang Ebanghelyo ang ating babasahin. We read the account of the triumphant entry to Jerusalem and we will hear the account of the Passion of Jesus. We are in the final days of Jesus. The invitation of the Lord for all of us is to stay with Him. Stay with Him in His final moments. Let us stay with Him in prayer. Stay with Him in sacrifice. Stay with Him in love. We now proceed with our Holy Week with the right disposition of humility, of courage, of fidelity and love. Dear brothers and sisters, like the crowds who acclaim Jesus in Jerusalem, let us go forward in peace. O sana sana ni David, hari ng Israel, pinagpala ang naparirito sa mga ng Panginoon. O sana sa kaitaasan. O sana sa kaitaasan, O sana sa anak ni David, Hari ng Israel, Pinagpala ang naparinito Sa ngala ng Panginoon. O sana sa kaitaasan, O sana sa kaitaasan, O sana sa anak ni David, Hari ng Israel, Pinagpala ang naparirito, Sangala ng Panginoon O sana sa kaitaasan O sana sa kaitaasan O sana sa anak ni David Hari ng Israel Nagpala ang naparirito sa ngala ng Panginoon. O sana sa kaitaasan, o sana sa kaitaasan. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, 
caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross. Graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. This mysterious servant prefigures Jesus, who identifies himself as the servant to freeze all people. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield, my buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? All who see me scoff at me. They mock me with parted lips. They wag their heads. He railed on the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him if he loves him. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Indeed, many dogs surround me. A pack of evildoers closes in upon me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? They divide my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. But you, O Lord, but not far from me, O my help, hasten to aid me. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? I will proclaim your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, give glory to him. Revere him, all you descendants of Israel. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? The glory of Jesus comes from the total emptying of self. His passion and death are his exaltation. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name, which is above every name. 
that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend, of those in heaven and in earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Christ Jesus is Lord, and the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. As soon as morning came, the chief priests with the elders and the scribes, that is, the whole Sanhedrin, held a council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him, Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply, You say so. The chief priests accused him of many things. Again, Pilate questioned him. Have you no answer? See, how many things they accuse you of? Jesus gave him no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now, on the occasion of the feast, he used to release to them one prisoner, whom they requested. A man called Barabbas was then in prison, along with the rebels who had committed murder in a rebellion. The crowd came forward and began to ask him to do for them as he was accustomed. Pilate answered, Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For he knew that it was out of envy that the chief priest had handed him over. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate again said to them in reply, Then, what do you want me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted again, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder, Crucify him! Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them. And after he had Jesus scorched, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is, the praetorium, and assembled the whole cohort. They clothed him in purple and, weaving a crown of thorns, placed it on him. They began to salute him with... Hail, King of the Jews! And kept striking his head with a reed and spitting upon him. They knelt before him in homage. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him out to crucify him. They pressed into a service passerby, Simon, a Cyrenian who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. They brought him to the place of Golgotha, which is translated place of the skull. They gave him wine drugged with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his garments by casting lots for them, 
to see what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. With him they crucified two revolutionaries, one on his right and one on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha! You who will destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself by coming down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes mocked him among themselves and said, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also kept abusing him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani, which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, Look, he is calling Elijah. One of them ran, soaked a sponge with wine, put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to take him down. Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. Please all kneel. Please stand. The veil of the sanctuary was torn in two, from top to bottom. When the centurion who stood facing him saw how he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Please be seated. Praise be Jesus Christ. And forever. Laudetur Jesus Christus. Pasensya na po doon sa mga nakatayo. Sama-sama tayong tumayo. Sakripisyo natin at penitensya sa pagsisimula ng Semana Santa. To our online parishioners who are with us, we are also praying for your intentions in this Mass. We are beginning the Holy Week the holiest of all weeks in the church celebrations. Ito yung pinakatampok na pagdiriwang sa ating kalendaryo ng simbahan. At ang simula ng Simana Santa ay ang linggo ng Palaspas. At marami sa inyo ang may dalang Palaspas. Ito ay tanda ng pagubuni ng pagsalubong kay Jesus sa kanyang mabunyi at maringal na pagpasok sa Jerusalem. This is a welcome worthy of the King. He comes to Jerusalem in order to claim His throne. At least in the mind of His disciples, that's what Jesus was doing. He was going to Jerusalem to overthrow the Romans, to overthrow Herod to replace the religious leaders, and he would make himself king of Israel. That was the expectation of Judas. That was the expectation of Simon the Zealot. That was the expectation of many of the Jews. But there were some who were telling Jesus, you don't have to do this, Lord. Alam mo naman na hinahanap ka na nila doon sa Jerusalem para batuhin. If you have been following us in the past few days, I have been trying to lead you into more of an understanding of the journeys of Jesus to Jerusalem. From the Gospel of John, we heard of so many travels to Jerusalem. In John chapter 2, he traveled to Jerusalem in order to attend the Passover feast. That's where he went to the temple and he overthrew all the money changers in the temple, chapter 2. And Jesus goes back to Galilee, to the north, 
end in John chapter 4 and 5, he goes back again to Jerusalem in the pool of Bethesda. He healed a crippled man who has been ill for 38 years. He goes back in John chapter 6 to Capernaum. He goes back in chapter 7 to Jerusalem. This time, Jesus was faced with the woman abuse of adultery. They were about to stone her to death, but Jesus said, He who has no sin cast the first stone. At the end of the chapter, it was Jesus whom they intended to stone. Two times at least, the people attempted to stone Jesus to death while he was in Jerusalem. So the disciples were telling him, Lord, you don't have to do this. We are okay here in Galilee. If you are familiar with the itinerary of Jesus, in a simple way of explaining it, si Jesus po ay taga Norte, taga Galilea, specifically Nazareth and eventually Capernaum. He had nothing to do in the south. The south is Jerusalem, Judea. Nandun yung mga lahat ng punong bayan. Nandun si Pilato. Nandun ang government. Nandun ang lahat ng mga matatalin at magagaling. Jesus was supposed to stay in the north, in the province, in Galilee, around the lake, preaching, giving miracles or doing miracles in order to help the people. Okay na siya doon eh. Ang dami na niyang followers doon sa Galilee. Ang dami na niyang tagasunod doon. At maraming nagmamahal sa kanya doon. Pinarami niya ang tinapay. Marami siyang binusog. Pinagaling niya ang mga may sakit. Maraming natuwa sa kanya. But Jerusalem, he was not accepted in Jerusalem. The Jews accused him of three things. That he was violating the Sabbath because he would heal on the Sabbath. He would equate himself as God, claiming to be the Son of God. And he healed Lazarus from the dead. And the readers were, telling, were saying to themselves, this guy needs to be stopped. This guy needs to be killed. Because otherwise, he comes to take us out of power. Jesus was warned. Don't go to Jerusalem anymore. They intend to kill you. They intend to hurt you. Jesus went anyway. Which they could not understand at first. But on Good Friday, we will understand. But for now, we ask ourselves, Why did Jesus go to Jerusalem? Comfortable na siya sa Galilea. Maayos ang buhay niya doon. Bakit kailangan pang pumunta para siya ay hulihin, parusahan, patayin? We will not understand it until Good Friday. So we will leave it at that tonight. Jesus goes to Jerusalem. For what? Minsan po ay isa ito sa pinaka malalim na karanasan ko bilang pari. 25 years na po akong pari. Pero minsan po ko inaanyayahang magmisa sa Don Bosco. Meron silang uh, funeral chapels doon. At ako po ay nagmisa sa isang dalawang patay. Dalawang kabaong. Mag-ama. A father and a daughter. At kinuwento sa akin kung bakit dalawang kabaong ang nandun sa funeral parlor. Yung bata, kasama ng kanyang pamilya, ay nag-swimming somewhere in Bataan. Yung bata, inanod ng malakas na alon. Napunta sa gitna ng dagat nalulunod na. Malayo na masyado sa dalampasigan, pero nakita nung tatay. At ang sabi ng mga tao sa tatay, wag mo nang puntahan. Malayo na masyado. Hindi na kayang abutin. Hayaan na natin siya doon. Pinigilan siya ng lahat ng mga tao. Ayos siyang papuntahin sa dagat. Malakas ang alon umiikot ang, ang tubig at nalulunod na yung bata. Pinigilan ng lahat yung tatay pero nakahulagpos 
at pumunta doon sa laot. Lumangoy sa gitna ng nag-aalim po yung dagat para makuha yung kanyang anak. And both of them perished and drowned. Kung gusto nating masagot yung tanong na why did Jesus have to go to Jerusalem? Yung kwentong ito ang isang posibleng sagot. Why did He do it? Why did He go to Jerusalem? The father in the story can tell us why. Many times in our life, sa buhay natin mga kapatid, may mga ayaw tayong gawin. May mga lugar tayong iniiwasan. May mga desisyon tayong kinakatakutan. There are so many aspects in our life, choices that we have to make that as long as possible, as much as possible, we want to avoid because it will hurt us, because it will be painful for us. There are many decisions in one's life that we will have to make and we know very well the consequences, but we have to make those decisions. For what? Yun ang dahilan kung bakit si Jesus ay kailangan pumunta ng Jerusalem. May mga kailangan tayong gawin kahit masasaktan tayo, kahit masisira, at kahit mamatay tayo, gagawin natin. Para saan? Para kanino? Your guess is as good as mine. Jesus need not go to Jerusalem, but He did so anyway. And you know very well the answer why. We begin the Holy Week. Let us journey with Jesus. Let us acclaim Him as Son of David, King of the Jews. Let us go with Him, stay with Him in His final days in Jerusalem. Praised be Jesus Christ. Now and forever. Please all stand. We profess our faith. I believe in one God. The Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us invoke the perfect sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ, who was crucified and died, and humbly beseech God to hear our prayer. In every prayer we shall say, Lord, in your mercy, hear us. Lord, in your mercy, hear us. May Pope Francis, bishops, priests, and deacons continue to profess their faith in God 
in an indifferent and sometimes hostile world, we pray. Lord, Lord in your in mercy, mercy, hear us. May government and civil leaders follow the example of Christ, who come not to, ser not to be served, but to serve and to give his life for the good of the people. We pray. Lord, Lord in, in your, your mercy, mercy, hear us. May we support the Ale Kapwa program as our way of responding to the challenges of restoring social justice and helping the weak and the needy. We pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear us. May those who continue to crucify Jesus by acts of violence against their brothers and sisters be led to the road of repentance and atone for the evils they have done. We pray, Lord, Lord in, in your, your mercy, mercy hear, hear us. Let us pray for the urgent concerns of our community and their personal intentions. We pray, Lord, Lord in, in your, your mercy, mercy hear, hear us. Loving God, you showed us the depth of your love in the sacrifice of Christ through your son's offering. We lift up to you the prayer of your people. Make us one with him, that we may follow him and share in his life, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Thanks to your goodness, this bread we offer through the fear. Work of our hands, it will become the bread of life. Blessed be God, blessed be God, blessed be God forever abroad. Blessed be God, blessed be God, blessed be God forever abroad. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Thanks to your goodness, this wine we offer, fruit of the vine, work of our hands. It will become the cup of joy. Blessed be Pray, dear friends, that my sacrifice in yours may be acceptable to God, our loving Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand. 
so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty in our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God. Through Christ our Lord. For though innocent. He suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins. His resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with the angels in joyful celebration, we too acclaim. <laughs> Santo, Santo, Panginoong Diyos na makapangyarihan, nakupuno ang langit at lupa ng kalwalhatian mo. O sana sa kaitaan, You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and workings of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son in our Lord, Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection, ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. 
Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Maria Goretti, and with all the saints. On his constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope, Jose our Bishop, the order of bishops and all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow in all the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. children of the loving father he loves us till the end he will do everything to save us and he did he went to jerusalem to die for our sins we turn to him and we pray together <laughs> Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, we may be free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ said to your apostles, 
Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace to you all. of God, Jesus Christ, the bread of life, who forgives us our sins, who gives us hope and light. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Thank you. 
ายตาหากลีนกุสนาลันดาสีเดลาใครอาคีฮัปปี้สัยดีปัสิ
please all kneel. The prayer of San Padre Pio after Holy Communion. Stay with me, Lord, for it is necessary to have you present so that I do not forget you. You know how easily I abandon you. Stay with me, Lord, because I am weak and I need your strength that I may not fall so often. Stay with me, Lord, for you are my life, and without you I am without fervor. Stay with me, Lord, for you are my light, and without you I am in darkness. Stay with me, Lord, to show me your will. Stay with me, Lord, so that I hear your voice and follow you. Stay with me, Lord, for I desire to love you very much and always be in your company. Stay with me, Lord, if you wish me to be faithful to you. Stay with me, Lord, for as poor as my soul is, I want it to be a place of consolation for you, a nest of love. Stay with me, Jesus, for it is getting late and the day is coming to a close, and life passes, death, judgment, eternity approaches. It is necessary to renew my strength so that I will not stop along the way, and for that I need you. It is getting late and death approaches. I fear the darkness, the temptations, the dryness, the cross, the sorrows. Oh, how I need you, my Jesus, in this night of exile. Stay with me tonight, Jesus, in life with all its dangers. I need you. Let me recognize you as your disciples did at the breaking of the bread, so that the Eucharistic communion be the light which disperses the darkness, the force which sustains me, the unique joy of my heart. Stay with me, Lord, because at the hour of my death, I want to remain united to you, if not by communion, at least by grace and love. Stay with me, Jesus. I do not ask for divine consolation because I do not merit it. But the gift of your presence, oh yes, I ask this of you. Stay with me, Lord, for it is you alone I look for. Your love, your grace, your will, your heart, your spirit, because I love you. And ask no other reward but to love you more and more. With the firm love, I will love you with all my heart while on earth and continue to love you perfectly during all eternity. Amen. Amen. We also pray for the family. Dearest Father in heaven, bless our family and bless us with new beginnings. Smile upon our parents and surround our children with the soft mantle of your love. Teach every child of ours to follow in your footsteps and to live life in the ways of faith, hope, and charity. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In a moment of silence, we pray for the intentions of our family. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Mary, Mother of God, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Santa Maria Goretti, pray for us. Please stand. Let us pray. Nourish with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son, you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection, you may lead us to where you call through Christ our Lord. Amen. Maraming salamat po sa inyong pagdalo sa ating banal na misa. Uh, right after the Mass, we will have our Lenten recollection, uh, a five-minute interval. At hindi mo na tayo kakain. Nag-ready po kami sa inyo ng burger. 
<laughs> Kaya, after po ng Lenten Recollection, diyon tayo po kakain, magsasalo-salo. Ang Recollection po ay halos 45 minutes lang naman po to an hour. Pero pwede rin tatlong oras kapag uh, uh, gising pa tayo. So, uh, right after the Mass, let us get ready for our Lenten Recollection. For those who can stay, for those naman na kailangan pong umuwi, ay uh, okay din po. No? And uh, again, let us journey with Jesus. He has now begun His journey to Jerusalem. Triumphant entry inside the city. For what? Malino sa atin yun. Bakit ginawa ni Jesus ito? Alam nyo ang sagot. At sana samahan natin siya sa kanyang pagsasakup katuparan ng kanyang misyon para sa ating kaligtasan. Stay with Jesus. Sa ating panalangin kay Padre Pio, stay with me, Lord. Jesus is telling you, stay with me. Stay with me for this week. Stay with me for these last moments that I am with you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may our loving God bless you and your family, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass has been offered. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Magandang gabi sa ating lahat, mga kapatid. Uh, yung pong mga hindi makaupo, sabay-sabay na lang tayong tumayo. Total ako naman, nakatayo din ako eh, no? So, <laughs> sama-sama na tayo sa sacrifice natin para sa ating recollection. So, ito po ay 30 minutes lang naman to uh, 45 minutes or an hour maximum. At simula natin ang ating pagninilay ngayong gabi with a song. Uh, we ask Marlon to lead us in our opening song. Sangala ng Ama at ng Anak at ng Espiritu Santo. Amen. Inaanyayahan ko kayo lahat na tumingin tayo kay Jesus sa ating harapan. What we have before us is the image of the Sindonic Christ. The Sindonic Christ is the Christ filled with wounds, filled with blood, agonizing, nakayuko, punong-puno ng dugo, Ramdam na ramdam ang hirap at dusa na kanyang pinagdaanan. We come to the Lord bringing our wounds, our traumas, our pains and injuries, our sickness and diseases before our Lord Jesus Christ crucified. Our Lord Jesus Christ forsaken and abandoned by His friends. Let us ask the Lord to grant us healing by His wounds. Tonight, 
we focus on the traumas of our lives. And we beg the Lord Jesus to transform these wounds into victories. From the first letter of Peter, this is our biblical verse for our reflection tonight. If you have your Bible with you, either in your cell phone or your Bible, you can turn to the first letter of Peter, chapter 2, verse 21 and following. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, no guile was found on his lips. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he trusted to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. For you were straying like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. By his wounds, you have been healed. Simulan natin ang ating pagninilay sa paglalahad sa Panginoon ng lahat ng daladala nating mga sugat sa ating puso't kalooban, sa ating mga pinagdadaanan at pinagdaanan bilang isang pamilya. Ipagdasal natin sa gabing ito na nawa sa ating pagninilay. Samahan tayo ni Jesus. Bigyan tayo ng liwanag at gabay ni Jesus upang maunawaan ang mga krus at sugat ng ating buhay. Lord Jesus, we come to you as a family. We come to you as a community. We come to witness your wounds. We come to surrender our wounds to yours. Heal us, Lord. Give us strength. Give us restoration and recovery. Give us peace. Through your wounds, we have been healed, and we claim the gift and grace of healing tonight, Lord. May I invite all of you, let us ask the Lord for this grace. Lord, grant us the grace of healing for ourselves, for our loved ones, for our households, our families. By your wounds, Lord, heal us. We ask all this in the mighty name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Magandang gabi sa inyong lahat. Taas ang kamay ng gutom na po. So, mamaya meron tayong, uh, meron tayo pong uh, uh, burger mamaya. Kanina po, nagbigay ako ng talk sa Alfonso Cavite, alas... 8 hanggang alas 12. Pagdating ng alas 12, bumaba po ako rito para magbigay ulit ng talk sa isang retreat na ginagawa ngayon dito sa Payo Center. Nagbigay ako ng panayam ng mga alas 3 ng hapon hanggang alas 5, almost 5 o'clock. Pagdating ng 5 o'clock, ako po ay nagmisa dito kasama po ninyo para sa ating anticipated Palm Sunday Mass. At pagkatapos ng 5 o'clock, nandito po tayo ngayong gabi para sa ating Lenten Recollection. Bukas po ay linggo. Ang akin pong misa bukas ay uh, apat. 7 a.m., 9 a.m., 10.30, and 12.15. At pagkatapos po noon ay meron na ulit isang panayam, isang recollection para sa isang grupo ng mga madre. Sa Monday po, Monday ng umaga, May mga darating naman po dito, mga taga-NLEX, 
kasama po si Secretary Babe Singson, kasama niya ang kanyang mga kasama sa NLEX. Magbibigay din po ako ng recollection sa kanila uh, sa umaga ng Holy Monday. At pagdating po ng hapon ng Holy Monday, meron po ako ulit isang panayam sa isang parokya din para sa isang recollection. Pagdating po ng Tuesday, magkakaroon po tayo ng film showing dito po sa atin. Ang uh, papalabas po ni uh, M7 Yalong ang kanyang magnum opus na Kristo noong 1997, starring Matranilio. Ito po ay lumang pelikula pero ni-remaster nila yung copy. So we will show it in our theater. After that, I will also give a short recollection and reflection on the film. Pagdating po ng Holy Wednesday, ako po ipupunta naman sa Bayumbong, Nueva Vizcaya. Naanyayahan po ako para magbigay ng panayam sa almost a thousand and more people uh, in the, during their Christmas. Ito po ay sa Bayumbong, mga anim limang oras mula dito. Pagdating po ng Holy Thursday, syempre may Christmas tayo sa Manila Cathedral. And of course, our usual uh, last su supper mass and visita iglesia, pagtatanod. Pagdating po ng Friday, ako po ay magbibigay ng panayam sa Araneta Coliseum, sa family retreat in Araneta at around 9 a.m. Pagdating po ng 11 a.m., pupunta po ako sa Lord's Flock. Meron na naman po akong isang panayam sa isang retreat po nila. Magbibigay po ako ng panayam. Pagdating po ng alas tres, ay babalik ako rito para ako po ay mag-lead ng atin pong Good Friday Veneration. Pagdating po ng alas 5, magpo-procession, iikot. At pagdating ng Sabado, at panibagong recollection po ang aking ibibigay sa panibago na namang grupo. And then paggabi ng Saturday ay Easter Vigil. At syempre Sunday ulit. Limang misa na naman at tayo po ay maraming beses po, tinanong po ako ng maraming mga kabataan lalo. Father, pwede bang bigyan mo kami ng iyong my day? My day. <laughs> Sabi ko, yan ang my day ko. Hindi ko po kinukwento itong mga ginagawa ko para ipagyabang yung aking sarili o marami akong kabisihan o marami akong ginagawa sa buhay. No, no. That's not my intention at all. My intention is... Why am I doing it? Kasi pwede naman po ako magsabi ng hindi, pagod na ako. O pwede ko namang sabihin na hindi pwede, may iba pa akong gagawin. Pwede rin naman po ako magdahilan at magsabi na hindi na lang po, iba na lang. Ang tawag po sa akin dito sa parokya ay the running father. Dahil unang-una po, lahat kayo tinatakbuhan ko. <laughs> Sapagkat marami po akong... Uh, Kailangan puntahan. Lagi po ako nagmamadali. Pag ginagawa ko ang isang bagay, gusto kong tapusin, maayos, pero lagit-lagi, kailangan akong may puntahan. I'm making myself vulnerable to you tonight, and I would like to tell you very honestly, in my heart, it's not what you think. The reason why I engage in all these many activities, well, I do them because I'm a priest. I tire myself to death because practically what I do is not for the service of God. To be honest with you and be very vulnerable with you, I do these things because of trauma. Why is there such restlessness in my heart? Why is there such a desire to always do things to always accomplish things, to always perform things, to always live up to an expectation or a dream or a desire. Where is all this coming from? If I am to be honest with you, hindi po yun dahil ako po'y magaling. Ginagawa ko po lahat ng kapaguran na yan kasi sa totoo lang, produkto po yan at nanggagaling po yan sa isang trauma. At ano po yung trauma na pinanggagalingan ng lahat ng ito? Ang pinanggagalingan po ng lahat ng ito ay something inside me. There is a nagging voice inside me every day and all the time telling me, Bata kang mamamatay. That has been a nagging, nagging voice inside my head. 
The very reason why I do things and I do the things that I do and I want to do them speedily. Kaya nga po ako mahilig magmotor. Because I want to do things in a speedy manner. I want to do this and to do that. There is such restlessness in me. Saan po nang gagaling yun? Again, sa aking pong pagpoproseso ng aking sarili, galing po yun sa pakiramdam ko, maaga akong mamamatay. Saan po nang gagaling yung takot na yun? That every day, there is some voice in me that tells me na, Pwedeng ito na yon o pwedeng ngayon na yon. Galing po yon sa trauma ko sa pagkamatay ng magulang ko. Maaga pong namatay ang nanay ko, 61. Tatay ko medyo late, pero ang, ang paraan ng kanilang pagkamatay ay hindi ko po talaga matanggap hanggang ngayon. Paano po sila namatay? Well, pareho silang namatay sa sakit, lalo na sa kanser. Sa akin po ngayon, lahat ng ginagawa ko ay laging nanggagaling doon. Panigurado ang papatay sa akin, cancer din. Kinakatakutan ko po yun, kaya nga ayaw ko magpadoktor. Kasi alaw ayaw na ayaw ko na malalaman ko na pwedeng ito rin ang papatay sa akin. At nung mamatay po ang nanay at tatay ko, in a matter of less than a month, ang nanay ko po na diagnose June 11, na matay June 30. Ang tatay ko na diagnose July, patay siya ng August. Pareho sila. So sudden, so 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 sudden. We did not have time to prepare. We did not have time to process. It just came like a snap of a finger. Nung namatay po sila pareho, may iniwan po yon sa akin na takot. At ano yung takot na iniwan sa akin ng kamatayan nila? Una, mabilis ang kamatayan mo. Hindi ka magtatagal. At kung magkakasakit ka man, hindi ka magkakasakit ng matagal. Mamamatay ka agad. The deaths of my parents in both the same manner of speedy death left a trauma in me telling me, a wound in me telling me it won't be long. And it will all be sudden. Ngayon po, yun ang bumabalot sa akin araw-araw. Kaya ang lagi ko pong ginagawa, gusto kong tapusin na lahat ngayon pa lang. Saan po nang gagaling yung aking restlessness? Takot. Trauma. Binigay ko po ang sarili ko bilang halimbawa kasi tingin ko, lahat tayo may ganyan. Nanggagaling tayo sa isang trauma. And tonight, I'd like to explore three questions with you. One, what is trauma? Two, what does trauma do, uh, do to us? And third, how can we triumph over trauma? How can we turn trauma into triumph? Kung okay lang sa inyo. Three Key questions. What is trauma? So we understand it. What does it do to us? And how can we turn it around? So pakitanong ang katabi mo. Anong trauma mo, Dai? Si Father, ako. <laughs> ang trauma mo, walang pera. <laughs> Ako po yung kamatayan talaga ng magulang ko, traumatic sa akin hanggang ngayon. So what do you mean by trauma, Father? If the death of your parents is your trauma in life, then what does it mean? Sabi po ni Peter Levine, uh, the, the expert on trauma, sabi po niya, trauma is perhaps the most avoided, ignored, belittled, denied, misunderstood, and untreated cause of human suffering. Ngayon po, sa mga medical practitioners, I don't know if there are medical pr practitioners here, meron po silang tinatawag na TIC. TIC means Trauma-Informed Care. Meron din pong tinatawag na Trauma-Informed Education. Meron dong Trauma-Informed Intervention. Sa ngayon po, ito yung palasak na marahil teorya na binibigyan diin sa iba't ibang mga medical fields, lalo na sa psychological 
emotional and mental health trauma. Kasi sa maraming ginagawa natin at sa maraming nangyayari sa ating buhay, hindi natin alam galing sa trauma yan. Bakit ka napakabilis na magalit? Bakit ka napakabilis na magmura? Bakit ka napakabilis na magtampo? Bakit kapag ka may sumingit sa'yo sa kalye, halos barilin mo kung meron kang barilang? Ilan sa inyo ang nung kinat kayo ng kotse, minura nyo agad? May pinanggagalingan yan. Ilan sa atin ang paggabi ay nagigising na lang ng walang dahilan? Siguro nagigising dahil sa isang masamang panaginip o siguro dahil sa hindi ka makatulog, sleepless nights, and many times you are not at ease with your life. You are not at peace. So, let's go and understand what is trauma. Trauma comes from the word trauma. So yung English word na trauma comes from the Greek word trauma. Na ang ibig sabihin ay wound. Sugat. It is an inner injury, a lasting rupture or split within the self due to difficult or hurtful events. Sabi ng isang psychologist, si Gabor Mate. It's the tyranny of the past. Wounds imprinted in our bodies and brains. Sa simpleng paliwanag, huwag na po tayong maging very technical about it. Ang trauma ay not just a physical wound, but an inner injury. A wound inside you. Nung namatay ang magulang ko, it has left a wound in me. A gaping and fresh raw wound that up to this day has not healed. Alam po ninyo, lagi akong umuuwi pagka birthday ng nanay ko, pagka death anniversary ng nanay ko, etc. So, I always go to Bicol to say mass kapag may mga special occasion para sa nanay at tatay ko. I always do that. Gaano po kahaba ang misa ko pagka ako yung nagbimisa sa puntod ng nanay at tatay ko? Wala pa hong 15 minutes. Dito po sa parokya, ang reklamo sa akin, Father, ang haba-haba na umili mo. Nagre-reklamo po sila. Pero pagka nagmimisa po ako sa puntod ng nanay ko, ang pinakamahaba kong homily sa puntod ng nanay ko ay 30 seconds. Sampung taon na, labing dalawang taon ng patay nanay ko, pero pagka nagmimisa ako sa kanya, hindi ako makapagmisa ng maayos. Anong tawag mo doon? Wound inside you that has not healed. And you're looking for, you're looking to be healed from it, but it's just there. You don't know how and when it will end. Nung ako po ay high school, hindi ko nababanggitin kung saan. <laughs> high school po ako, first year. Isang gabi, nasa dorm po kami. Kasi nung ako yung nag-aaral, nasa dorm po ako kasama ng iba pang mga kabataan. Isang gabi po, ginising ako ng mga, uh, ng mga seniors, ng mga nakatatanda. At dinala ako sa swimming pool ng school. At doon sa swimming pool ay nilublob nila ako. Alas dose ng ating gabi. Wala akong kamalay-malay at nilublob nila ako doon sa swimming pool. Naaalimpungatan ka pa at nilublob ka nila sa tubig at tinatanong ka nila, Sinong master mo? Initiation po pala namin yun. First year high school. Trauma. Hanggang ngayon, daladala ko po yun. Ano po yung epekto sa akin ng traumatic experience na yon na ginising ako sa gitna ng gabi, niluglub ako sa tubig, at tinatanong ako, sinong master mo? Kaya naman po, pag may nakakita ako ng mga bully sa paligid ko, agad-agad ang reaction ko bumabalik doon sa mga nambuli sa akin nung first year high school ako. Kaya po ang pepid ko sakali, kapag ka may mga wang-wang dyan, kapag ka-traffic tayo, tapos nauuna kayo, minumura ko na kayo lahat. Mga ano kayo, pare-pareho tayo nasa traffic, mauna kayo, sino kayo? 
may authority hang up po ako. Bakit? First year high school. Yung mga nakatataas sa akin, binugbog ako, niloblob ako sa tubig, hanggang ngayon, daladala ko yun. Kaya pag may nakikita ako ng mga tao na nambubuli sa kapwa nila, inuumbagan ko kagad. Buti na lang po, nagpari ako at hindi nagpulis. <laughs> Kasi kung nagpulis po ako, dami ko nang pinatay. <laughs> Dahil nang gagaling po sa isang nakaraan na hanggang ngayon ay hindi maghilom. Wounds that you carry with you because it started somewhere. If you're not trauma-informed, if your wife is not trauma-informed, meaning kung hindi alam na mga tao sa paligid mo kung saan ka nang gagaling, tapos sila. Masasaktan mo sila at hindi ka nila maiintindihan. At maraming beses sa buhay ng pamilya ngayon, maraming mga trauma. And when we say trauma, maraming mga sugat ang hindi nila nahaharap at hindi nauunawaan. Favorite psychologist ko po, si James Hillman. Sabi ni James Hillman, A symptom suffers most when it doesn't know where it belongs. A symptom suffers most when it does not know where it belongs. Ibig sabihin, pag hindi mo makapa kung saan nang gagaling yung mga uh, negative emotions mo, magkakaproblema tayo dyan. Sa relationship mo, sa mga pamilya mo, sa katrabaho mo, kaklase mo, kaibigan mo. Kapag ka hindi ka trauma-informed, ibig sabihin, kapag ka hindi mo alam kung saan ka nang gagaling, malilito din ang mga tao sa paligid mo. Trauma, sabi ni Gabor Mate, trauma is not what happens to you, but what happens inside you. Lahat naman po tayo may mga negative events in our life. Marami po tayo mga tragedies and tra traumatic events, but it's not, not trauma. The events are not your trauma. They were the cause of your trauma, but the trauma is not the event itself, but what is left in you after the event. What happens to you inside. Not the events themselves, but what happens within you as a result of the difficult or hurtful events that befall you. A fracturing of the self, of others' relationship, or of your relationship to the world. A loss of your connection to yourself, to others around you, to your family, to, you, to the world around you. So, sa madaling salita, when trauma dominates your life, you become disconnected with yourself and you become disconnected with others around you because you will be focusing yourself on that pain and injury inside you and you don't know where to move and proceed and how to move forward. Yeah. So, pakita nung ulit ang katabi mo. Anong trauma mo? Anong pinagdaanan mo? Meron po ako sang kakilala. Ayon na ayon niya pong makakita ng barko. Ayon na ayon niyang makakita ng barko. So tinanong ko siya minsan, anong meron? Ba't ayaw mong... Ayon niyang makakita ng dagat, ayon niyang makikita ng barko, ayon niyang makakita ng... Anything whatsoever that deals with the, with the sea. Ayon niya nga ng isda eh. Basta anything to do with the sea, ayaw niya. Kasi, sima ng anak niya, nabagok ang ulo ng anak niya habang may inaayos na makina, nabagok, nahulog sa bangka, hindi na nakita. At hindi niya mapatawad ang sarili niya kasi siya ang nagtulak sa anak niya para magsiman. After the death of her, of her son, the mere sight of the ship or the sea or even the fish would make her cringe and would make her uneasy. Ang nang tawag po natin doon? Trauma. 
you will understand much of your behavior if you're trauma-informed. Hanggat maaari, alamin natin kung bakit natin ginagawa ang mga ginagawa natin at saan ito nang gagaling. At maganda rin naman sa ating pamilya, magandang imbis na sisihin sila, husgahan sila, murahin sila, palayasin sila. Why don't you ask the more fundamental question? Not why do you do this, but where are you coming from? I want to understand where are you coming from? Whatever happened to you? Meron po tayong tinatawag na PTSD, the Post Traumatic Stress Disorder. Ito po yung nangyayari madalas sa mga sundalo. Pakatapos sumabak sa gyera, pagbalik ng bahay, never the same again. What happened? Trauma. Maraming mga tao ngayon, we are not trauma-informed. Kasi tingin natin, ganyan na talaga siya eh. Wala tayong magagawa. No? Hindi siya ganyan. May nangyari sa kanya. Now, we don't use trauma as an excuse to justify people's actions and behavior. Ay, hindi, kasi may trauma yan, kaya okay lang. No. We are trauma-informed. We want to be informed about the traumas of people so that we would know how to deal with them and we would know how to deal with ourselves. Sabi ni Gabor Mate again, we each carry our wounds in our own way. So there is neither sense nor value engaging them against those of others. We each carry our wounds. No one is spared from traumatic experience. Lahat tayo po meron. Kasi yun lang, di mo alam. O kaya, ay mo lang alamin. Meron po akong isang naging counselee. Lagi siyang may nightmare. Every night, nightmare. She has become very accomplished. Naging ano po siya, naging uh, VP siya ng isang kumpanya. She has become a vice president of a company. Very uh, successful. In terms of career, she's doing well. She's very accomplished. But she can sleep very well. Lagit lagi siyang may recurring nightmare. So we, she came to me, consulted with me, and asked me, Father, what do I do? I am this and that. Marami naman po akong narating sa buhay. Marami akong accomplish. Pero ito lang po. Hindi ako makatulog. And this has been going on for the past 15, 20 years, Father. 20 years to be exact. Always nightmares. Sabi ko, nagpa-check ka na ba sa mga therapist or psychologist para lang psychiatrist para, you know, matulungan ka niya? She, she did. Sabi niya, yes, yes, I did. Pero father, wala talaga eh. Walang umepekto sa akin ng mga therapist and all that. So, nagpa-medication ako pero ayoko naman kasi mas, ayoko maging dependent sa drugs and all that. Sabi ko, sige, so pag-usapan natin. Yung kanyang trauma happened when she was college. And when she was in college, she was gang raped. She did not tell anyone. She does not want to tell even her husband. No one knows except me and now every one of you. <laughs> but of course, you don't know her. And she was telling me, it happened when I was college. And my reaction to that was, nobody will know. And I will make it on my own. I will be successful in my career. I will, I will not destroy myself. I will not allow this tragedy to befall me, to destroy me, to take away my dreams. I will not allow it. So she resisted the temptation to destroy or defeat herself. Instead of engaging in self-defeating actions or behaviors, she committed herself now. I will bury this in my past and I will move forward and go to be successful. And she did. The problem is the nightmares. The nightmares. Pag titignan mo siya, wala kang masasabi. She's all nice and beautiful. But at night, she has never been at peace. That's what trauma can do to us. It can destroy you from within. You can put on a facade. You can put on a, uh, you know, you can put on a face. But inside you, you're hurting. 
And that's why for many of us, we have to deal with trauma again and again. We have to deal with the wounds inside each one of us. Trauma is not what happened to you. It is the wound that is inside you caused by those negative tragedies and events in your life. Meron dalawang klase ng trauma, sabi ng psychology. A capital T trauma and a small T trauma. Yung capital T trauma, ito yung mga malalaking trahedya ng buhay natin. Nagda-drive ka, biglang nag-skid ang sakin mo, umikot-ikot, and then you are just shell-shocked. Shocked because of what happened and it did not leave you. Traumatic experience for me, the death of my parents, it has never left me. The death inflicted in me a wound that up to now does not heal. Traumatic uh, events that are capital T are those events that are not supposed to happen, but they did happen. So you ask yourself, ano yung mga capital T trauma mo? Separation. Unhappy childhood. Abandonment. Absenteeism of parents. Neglect. Verbal abuse. Sexual abuse. Physical abuse. All these things. Every one of us has in one way or another. Kaya ngayon po, hinahunting ko yung mga senior na naglublub sa akin sa swimming pool. Sinasabi ko sa sarili ko, pag nakita ko ulit yung mga yan, at alam po ninyo, lately, na pagtanto ko, ako po kasi I'd like to let you into a secret of mine, adik po ako sa panonood ng pelikula ni FPJ. <laughs> sa YouTube po, yun lang ang pinapanood ko. Hindi ko po pinapanood yung mga mukha ko, yung misa ko. Hindi ko pinapanood sa YouTube yan. Ang pinapanood ko sa YouTube, yung FPJ Productions. Yung mga pelikula ni FPJ. So, kaya, alam na alam ko yung batang kaya po. <laughs> At alam na alam ko yung probinsyano. <laughs> Pero tinitinan ko po yung sarili ko. but kaya gustong gusto ko yung mga pelikula na yon Ang isang paliwanag ko lang ay, kasi gustong kagayahin, gusto kong gayahin si FPJ. Pag nakita ko yung mga kontrabida ng buhay ko, bubugbugin ko talaga sila. Makikita nila. Small T trauma, yung paglublob sa akin. Kasi, ganyan talaga eh. Initiation yan eh. Mga bata kayo eh. Talagang mangyayari at mangyayari yan na mabubuli ka. Wala namang bata na hindi nabuli eh. Lahat naman, nagkaroon tayo ng... So, small T trauma ko yun, pero hanggang ngayon, daladala ko yun. So, may impact din pala. Kaya hindi mo pwedeng maliitin yung small T and capital T trauma. Kasi pare-pareho lang yan. Yung capital T, siguro, masyadong ano yan, masyadong powerful and overwhelming. Yung small T, siguro, konti. Pero pagparate, pwede rin na makasakit sa'yo. So, question. Ito na. Nagiging komplikado na buhay natin. Ano yung mga capital T traumas in your life right now? Pakitingnan nga ang katabi mo. Ano yung capital T? Mahirap po. Kapag ka marami tayo, may capital T ka na, may small T traumas ka pa. So how do you, how do you integrate them in your life? Yung po yung syndonic crucifix. Yung wound, ang dami. Kaya po very realistic po itong depiction na ito of the, of the crucifixion of Jesus kasi talagang yung sugat, ang dami. At palagay ko, tayo din sa buhay natin, ang dami mong sugat. Amen? Ayun ang ginawa mo dyan. Wala. Hinahayaan lang natin na katiwangwang. Hinahayaan lang natin na magnaklak. <laughs> Hinahayaan lang natin. We are not trauma-informed. Tati-rati po, uh, this year po, ako ay 25 years in my ministry. Palakpakan naman dyan. No? <laughs> Talagang pinilit. Ano? pinilit. Uh, 25 years na po ako ngayong taong ito sa, ano, sa priesthood. Ngayong September 8. Invitado po kayo, September 8, 1999. Hindi pala, 2024 na pala. So, September 8, 1999 ako naging pare. And then, September 8, 2024, uh, 
ay akin pong uh, 25th uh, anniversary as a priest. Oh, hindi na, hindi na. Pinapalakpak na ko kayo kanina. Eh. Pero yung pong ano, yung aking pong journey to the priesthood, ay hindi po, akala po natin ganong kabilis, pero hindi po eh. Uh, nagsimula po ako sa aking paglalakbay sa priesthood ng 12 years old. So alam nyo na kung saan ako nilublob sa tubig. No? Kasi 12 years old po ako, nasa seminaryo na po ako. And then, tuloy-tuloy po ako. Never akong umalis o lumabas ng seminaryo. Kasi 12 years old pa lang, alam ko na magpapari ako eh. Alam ko na gusto kong magpari. Malinaw sa akin yun. No? Ever since I was a, a child, it was very clear in my mind. No other choice, no other option. It's priesthood or bust. It's priesthood or nothing. Noong 1997, 1997, ay pinalabas po ako ng seminaryo. Malapit na po akong maging diakono, mga several months na lang, uh, sabi sa akin ng pari ay, uh, you have to go. Uh, you cannot proceed. You know, there are there are just you know too many too many reasons for you not to be ready and prepared for it or even not for it so madali style ta po pinalis po ko hindi ko na babanggitin kung bakit no ichichismis ko na lang later no pero pinalabas po ako ng seminaryo at pag nung nung ako po pinalabas talagang very traumatic sa akin kasi priesthood or basta ko eh tapos bigla pinalis ka so galit na galit po ako doon sa pari na nagpalabas sa akin napaka-unfair nyo. Wala na nga nagpapari, pinapalabas nyo pa. Napaka walang ya kayo. So, minumura ko. <laughs> Sorry po, Lord. No? So, minumura ko talaga yung para. Kayo po. Ayan. So, kasi hindi pa ho ako, ano nun, hindi pa ho ako uh, renewed Christian nun. <laughs> so, talaga, galit na galit ako. No? And there were times really that I was so, uh, that I was so, in my, in my, you know, in my desperation and depression, you know, Inaaway ko yung nanay ko noon, inaaway ako ng nanay ko, etc. etc. So, madali salita, uh, maraming nangyari and uh, hindi maganda. At sa sinabi, sinapit ko po talagang, nagtampo ko kay Lord, no? nagtampo din ako sa, sa maraming tao. At umayaw na po ako, ayaw ka na magpari noon, ayaw ka na. Uh, ayaw nyo, diwag nyo. Noong una po, ay galit ako. Galit ako sa mga pare, galit ako sa mga nag... Uh, again, nung, y- n- nung sumunod na, yung galit na palitan ho ng kung ayaw nyo, diwag nyo. So ayaw ko na. Wala na akong balak. And I wanted to go and did not want to become a priest anymore. Until one day, may natanggap po ako na, ano, na invitation. Invitation po ng mga kaibigan ko para sa kanilang ordination to the priesthood. Ang sakit. Kasi gusto ko to eh, pero hindi binigay sa akin eh. So I felt really bad about it. No? And it was really a moment when I said to myself, ah, tapos na yan, wag na tayo dyan. Pero masakit, ang sakit. No? So I wanted to be a priest eh. So natanggap ko po yung card, invitation card, ordination nila. So, pero I went. Pumunta pa rin ako kasi kaibigan ko eh, mga kaibigan ko. Alam po ninyo, pagdating ko ng Manila Cathedral, sino po yung pare yung unang bumungad sa akin? <laughs> yung po, <laughs> yung, gusto kong, yung kung gusto kong buntalin talaga. <laughs> pinalayas ako, pinalayas ako nito. <laughs> galit na galit pa rin ako. No? Sabi niya sa akin, Stuy, ang ginawa mo sa, di ka napapakita sa akin. Uh, set an appointment. You know, set an appointment with secretary and then mag-uusap tayo ulit. It was the longest week in my life because, ano ba, tapos na ako dito eh, tapos ngayon, yan, usap tayo. So, yung usap, nag-prevail po yung usap. And then, nung nag-uusap po kami, sabi niya, o oh, sige, uh, bumalik ka na. So, pinabalik niya rin ako. So, that was 25 years ago, hanggang ngayon, galit pa rin ako doon sa pari. Sa loob-loob ko, lang nga ka. Ayos-ayos ng buhay ko, tapos sinira mo. Pero now, 25 years later, I say to myself, hindi, kailangan yon. At yung trauma na yon, hindi dapat sumira ng plano ng Diyos para sa'yo. Small trauma yon sa akin. 
na naintindihan ko eventually. So, puro na lang example ko ginagamit ko eh. Kayo naman kaya. Ano yung mga trauma na hindi nyo pinapansin, pero it affects you today. Even today. What does trauma do to us? Trauma can do two things in us. It will remain raw or it will become a scar. Raw meaning it's an ongoing source of pain and hurt in your life. Parang yung sakit andyan pa rin at di nawawala. Parang yung yung ginawang pangloloko sa'yo ng asawa mo o ng kaibigan mo hanggang ngayon, yan pa rin. Yung pa din, di nawawala. Or it can be replaced by a scar. Akala mo healed, but actually it has become hard, inflexible, and numb. So hindi rin gumaling. Yung, yung trauma natin could be forever raw or it could be a scar eventually. But just the same, it's a wound that you carry in your life. What trauma does to us is, one, it constricts yourself. Constriction of the self, meaning, pagka namumuhay ka sa trauma ng nakaraan, ang iyong sarili ay napakalimitado dahil ang tingin mo sa buhay ay tungkol lang lahat sa mga nangyari sa iyo. You will be stuck in the past and you will never appreciate the grace of the present. You will be fragmented because you are living today but your mind and your heart belongs to the past. You are not able to grow and you are not able to flourish because you are always tyrannized and terrorized by, your, by the past wound that has happened in your life. So, in effect, if you are living in trauma, you will never reach your true potential. You will forever be stuck and you will never move forward. In your relationships, nothing will grow because you are barren, you are sterile. Ang puso mo ay hindi pwedeng lumago, hindi pwedeng mag-usbong ng mga magagandang bagay kasi laging ang puso mo ay nakatingin doon sa mga masamang nangyari sa nakaraan mo. You are stuck and you are forever robbed of joy, of hope, and you cannot grow. That's what trauma does to a person. It makes you unhappy. It makes you really hurt. And hurting people hurt people. Many times in our life, we don't understand why people treat us this way when in fact they are just coming from trauma and they, they don't know it and they lash it on you. And that is why also in our many families, there is what we call intergenerational trauma because the parent did not know the trauma inflicted on them by their parents and these parents will inflict this trauma on the children and the children will inflict this on their children and down the line in history, in generation after generation, everybody is stuck in the past. Nobody gets to be healed because no one dared to ask the question, where are we coming from? What's wrong with me? What is happening to me? Why am I like this? Madalas kasi ang tinatanong natin ay, ba't ka ganyan? Hindi natin tinatanong, bakit ganito ako? At lagi natin sinasaring, ikaw kasi! Hindi natin tinatanong, baka ako? Kaya minsan, tama din naman yung sinasabi din ba ng mga artista, it's not you, it's me. Tama din naman yun. Kasi nga, may mga pagkakataon na totoo naman talaga yun. It's you. It's not them. And again, we are, you know, we point a finger on others because we are not trauma-informed. We don't know our wounds. We don't know how to identify and label our wounds. And so, we inflict harm on others around us. So, final point. How do we turn it around? How can we turn trauma into triumph? Three C's. Know the cause, see the connections, and anticipate the consequences. Number one, 
We have to know the cause. Yun po ang ibig sabihin ng trauma-informed. Kailangan sa diksikin natin ng ating sarili, ano bang nangyari sa akin? Ano bang nangyari sa, sa pamilya ko? Ano bang pagkakamali? O ano bang... Uh, so hindi na ngayon yung tanong na pagkakamali. Hindi na tinatanong yung pagkakamali. Tinatanong mo na ay, ano yung sakit or sugat? na nasa akin, na dala-dala ko pa rin hanggang ngayon, that I can seem to over overcome, or that I cannot seem to reconcile with myself. What's the possible cause? So that's a question, where are you coming from? I want to know, saan ka ba talaga nang gagaling? Pakitan nung nga ang katabi mo, saan ka ba talaga galing? Galing ako sa Makati. <laughs> Hindi. <laughs> saan ka nang gagaling? Saan ka nang gagaling? Ano pinanggagalingan mo? Gusto kong maintindihan. Gusto kong maintindihan. And then after trying to understand where is the person coming from, try to see that that everything is connected in one's life. Kaya siya ganito kasi may nangyaring ganon. It's not a justification again. It's not an excuse. no. But we are trying to see the connections. Ah, kaya pala. So, intindihin natin. Ah, ganun ba? O sige, ayusin natin. Okay. So, pwede tayong magsimula ulit kung ganun man, ganun pala. So, we see the connection and we don't judge people. We don't condemn people. We understand them. And we have to be very careful because if we are not able to settle with the traumas and the wounds inflicted on us by the past, there will be consequences. Alam natin na laging may consequence ang mga, uh, mga bagay na hindi natin binibigyan ng attention sa buhay natin. Consequence in the family, family division, family quarrel, argument, the tension, the, the, the toxicity, the, uh, the arguments, you know, everything around you is poison. You're living in an environment of toxicity because you did not identify. That's, that's the consequence of what happened to you and what happened to you as a family. So, in order for us to turn it around, we have to see the cause, we have to see the connections in our life, and we have to know that there are consequences to our inability to deal with these things. Do not leave them hanging. Otherwise, you will be forever be in the cycle, the vicious cycle of what? Hurting one another. Vicious cycle. It's a slippery slope of, uh, of negativity in your life. Amen. Kanina po, nung kinukwento ko sa inyo yung mga trauma ko, eh dahil po yun sa pinaproseso ko na yung sarili ko. Naiintindihan ko kung bakit ganito ako kasi alam ko ganang gagaling dito yan. Hindi ko po sinasabing healed na ako. Hindi ko po sinasabing okay na ako. Pero it's just that I try to be informed of where I am coming from. Journey to wholeness. That is what we are after. Healing is a natural movement towards wholeness. It is not a, di a, a direction. Not, not a it is a direction, not a destination. It's a line in a map, not a dot. In other words, healing from trauma is not, you know, it's not result-oriented. Healing is always a process. Sasabihin mo ba, am I healed now? No one can say that. No one can claim that he or she is totally healed. All that we can say is, I'm in process. I mean, uh, in the journey to it. It is possible, for brothers and sisters, to be healed but not cured. And it's possible to be cured but not healed. Magkaiba po yan. Healing and curing is iba. Magkaiba po. Ang, ang pag-cure ay yung may sakit, magiging magaling. So, cure the sickness. But trauma is not a sickness. It's a wound. You are not cured from it because it's not a disease. Well, there are disorders eventually, pagka masyado ng ano, pero traumas are not sickness. These are wounds that need to be healed inside you. You're not sick. You're just wounded. And you just need to go into the process of healing. And healing is the process of going into wholeness of ourselves. 
So sabi po ng isang psychology si Gabor Mate again, the four A's of healing the self. Let me, be, uh, let me give you the final uh, inputs for our recollection tonight. There are four A's for healing the self. One, authenticity. Accepting yourself fully. Tanggapin mo ang totoo. Tanggapin mo ang totoo na nagkamali ka. Tanggapin mo ang totoo na nasasaktan ka pa rin. Tanggapin mo ang totoo na hindi ka pa okay. Tanggapin mo. You don't have to deny the truth about you and what is happening to you. It all starts from being authentic about yourself. Huwag nang magtago. Tagal na tayong nagtataguan ng feelings eh. Just be honest and authentic about it. Na ito ko eh. Ito nararamdaman ko eh. At tanggapin din natin ang isa't isa according to our own true selves. Not according to our pretentious self, but according to our true self. So question, are you transparent with one another? In the family, for example, are you transparent with your children about how you feel, about where you are? At yun po ang isang naging trauma ko eh. Ang trauma ko sa magulang ko, they were never transparent with us. May sakit na pala, hindi man lang nagsasabi. At madedetect na lang daw ang doktor kung kailan dulo na. Wala nang magagawa. Kaya traumatic din po sa akin yun kasi ang bilis naman, napakadali. At minsan nagtatampo din ako sa magulang ko kasi parang, eh hindi naman kayo nagsasabi eh. Tapos ngayon kami masasaktan. May trauma pa rin. Ano? <laughs> pero hindi ko naman sa sinisisi sila pero sana nagsabi man lang kayo para nakapaghanda naman tayo. Authenticity. It helps if you're transparent and authentic with each other. Pwede po ba yan? In the family, to your children or with your spouse, you know, just be authentic. Don't pretend before them. You can pretend before your enemies. <laughs> Pwede yun. Pero with your loved ones, don't pretend. Take off the masks. Kasi hanggang ngayon, nakamask pa rin tayo. Hindi. Allow them to peek into your soul. Allow them to, you know, to find you and see you as you, the real you. Two, agency. Take charge. Take responsibility. Hindi mo pwedeng sabihin na, eh, kasi ganito ang nangyari sa akin dati, kaya ganito ako ngayon. Hindi. Nangyari yan sa'yo noon, pero hindi ka na ngayon ganun. You have to take charge of take responsibility na iba na ngayon ikaw. At yun ang sinabi ko dito sa executive na to na hanggang ngayon may recurring nightmares. I was telling her, you know, your present self is compromised by your past self. Your past self is dictating on your present self, on who, he, who she is today. And that's unfair to your present self because the present you is different from the old you. The old you or the old self in college did not know any better and your present self is judging your old self for her irresponsibility and weaknesses when in fact, she did not know any better and she was helpless at that time. Why is your present self judging your old self? It's totally unfair. So, inaway ko na rin siya. <laughs> Para matauhan siya. So, sabi ko sa kanya, your present self, uh, your present successful self is so unfair to your past self. It doesn't mean that it's a different person altogether, but your present self is more capable of saying to your past self, you're long gone. It's all over. Matagal na yon. I am a different person now. Same but different. Agency. Take responsibility for your life. Hindi mo pwedeng isisi lagi sa magulang mo na, okay, kasi magulang namin, pinahirapan kami nung bata kami, binugbuga ko ng patiwarik eh. Parang, Lagi na lang ba isisisi magulang lahat ng mga nangyayari sa buhay mo ngayon? Hindi. Pwedeng binitin ka ng patiwarik ng magulang mo noon at sinaktan ka ng gusto. Yes! And it has left you a scar, a wound, trauma. But that trauma belongs to the past. It does not, hit, does not need to be carried today. Take responsibility for your life today. Pakasabi nga sa katabi mo yan, take responsibility. Tapos na yon, ito na ngayon. And it's a different, you know, different ball game. Ayan. Don't be so unfair to your present self. And sabi niya, uh, ito, uh, matatawa ka dito kay Gabor Mati, and sabi niya, be angry. If you want to release yourself from trauma, be angry with yourself. 
healthy anger in the sense that not in terms of resentment, but anger in terms of boundaries. Magalit ka sa sarili mo in the sense na tama na. Hanggang dito na lang yan. Yan po yung healthy anger. We draw the line. We draw the boundary defense. And we tell ourselves, ah, trauma, hanggang dito ka na lang. Hindi ka na pwedeng pumunta doon. You have to order the evil inside you to stop pestering you today. If you want to do it, ask a priest to tell you, expel the demons in my past, of my past. And today I reclaim my life. Today I reclaim myself. Because my past does not dictate on me today. Can you say that to yourself? My past will never dictate on me what I am today. That's agency and that's healthy anger. Boundary. Tama na. Tama na yung moping. Tama na yung self-pity. Tama na yung... Ewan ko sa inyo. <laughs> anger. <laughs> healthy anger. Para sabihin mo sa asawa mo, sabihin mo sa kaibigan mo, tama na nga. Tapos na yan. Okay na tayo. Boundary defense. And then, finally, yung sabi ni uh, Gabor Mate, acceptance. Acceptance, not resignation, but recognition of things as they are. Recognize that today is the best day and the beginning of the rest of your life. It's a beautiful day. Kaya po yun po ang lagi kong sinasabi, every day po, pag nagmimisa ako, it's a beautiful day. I consider every day as a new day. It's a beautiful day. It's connected with yesterday, but it's different. There is something new today. There is some grace today that that past of mine does not have any right to encroach in. This belongs today. Boundary. And acceptance. Amen. And sabi ni uh, Gabor Mate, five compassions for healing relationships. In the end, if we want to turn it around, if we, if we are to overcome trauma in our life, in our healing of our families, there's no other way except compassion. Compassion, compassion. And compassion means... I cannot solve your problem. I cannot eliminate your struggle. I cannot eliminate your, your hurts. But I'll suffer with you. That's compassion. I'll suffer with you. Hindi ko maaalis yung sakit niyan, anak. Parang yung nanay na, hindi ko maaalis yung anak, yung sakit mo. Pero masasaktan din ako. Kasama mo. I suffer with you. Kaya po pagka nagpapasurgery o nagpapaprocedure yung mga tao, di ba? Pag mag Kaya yung pandemic, napakahirap nun eh. Kasi may sakit ka na, wala ka pang makausap. Sa akin ha, pag may sakit pero may nakakahawak ng kamay, okay na yun. Kasi ibig sabihin nun, hindi ka nag-iisa doon. Compassion. To suffer with. It could be compassion of curiosity and understanding, meaning compassion of knowing the person and where he is coming from. Context. You understand the context of the person. So compassion is, I understand where you're coming from. I'd like to know where you're coming from. Compassion of recognition means we are on the same boat. Nasa pareho tayong bangka. Huwag kang mag-alala. Magkasama tayo dito. Compassion of truth. Not, not uh, falsehood or not uh, resistance to truth, but acceptance na ito eh. May problema tayo, darling eh. Sa mga mag-asawa, compassion of truth means may problema tayo, darling. Tanggapin natin may problema tayo. So, anong gagawin natin? At least, tinanggap natin na may problema tayo. Yung iba naman, wala na. Hindi na nag-uusap. Hindi na nag, ano? Pero, compassion of truth means accept. Accept the truth. And compassion of possibility is there is more to each of us. Compassion of possibility is don't lose hope. There is hope for us. I suffer with you because we know that there is hope for us. I will be here for you. I'll not leave you. Kaya naman, 
And final word, by His wounds we were healed. Because the cross of Jesus is a testament and a reminder to us that God suffers with us. God was traumatized like us. God was embarrassed and shamed like us. And He is exposing His wounds to us. He is exposing His vulnerability to us to tell us that it's okay. I also got wounded. I know how it feels. I will suffer with you. Sabi ni St. Bernard of Clairvaux, God cannot suffer, but He can suffer with. Hindi maghihirap ang Diyos. Pero pwede siyang maghirap sa pagsama sa atin. He will suffer with us, and by His wounds, we will find our comfort, our healing. Personal experience. Sa sarili ko po ngayon, nabanggit ko po yung restlessness. Alam ko kung saan nang gagaling yan. Takot ako ho, na mamatay ng maaga. At kung mamamatay man ako ng maaga, sinasabi ko sa sarili ko, nagawa ko na lahat. At yun ang isang trauma, isang takot na parang it, you know, it, it, always, it always affects you in everything that you do. But at the end of it all, at the end of it all, I say to myself na, well, uh, takot ako sa kamatayan, <laughs> pero yeah, it will come. And that is why Jesus had to endure death also. Parang tinapos niya yung whole spectrum of human experience. Eh. Para sabihin natin, oh, wala tayong masabi sa kanya na, oh, hindi mo naman alam yun, hindi mo naman pinagdaanan yan. Eh. Hindi. Sasabihin ni Lord sa atin, alam ko yan. Pinagdadaanan ko yan. At pinagdaanan ko yung mga takot mo na yan. So wag kang magalala. Hindi ang kamatayan ng tatalo sa iyo. At yun din po ang inuulit-ulit ko sa sarili ko every day. If it is today, Lord, I know you will be there for me. Masarap din po palang maging takot mamatay araw-araw. Kasi parang you begin to appreciate every day as the possible last day of your life. I think there is a, a, a negative side to it, but there is also a positive side to it. And what is the positive side to it? That you cherish every day. Every time I have a conversation with a person, I cherish it. I cherish it. I cherish every person that I meet. I cherish every encounter that I have. I cherish every minute and hour and day that I have. And weeks and months and years. And I cherish it every day because I know this is not going to be long. And I know any day it could be taken from me. I'm afraid of that. But I'm also inspired and energized by that. It does not debilitate me. It does not disable me. It helps me to appreciate the gift of the present moment every day. So pwede pala na yung mga takot at mga sugat mo, pwedeng yun din na maging pintuan para mas lalo ka pang magsikap. The wounds are not supposed to, to take away your joy or to take away your hope. The wounds are supposed to help you enter into a new uh, reality or chapter in your life because you are wounded. And you are able to enter into the pains of others as well. Kaya po, kanina, halimbawa, may, may, habang kinuwento ko ito, uh, sa isang recollection ko, itong experience ko with my fear of death, you know, because of the death of my parents, you know, lumapit sa akin yung isang, uh, uh, yung isang participant ng recollection, sabi niya, Father, alam niyo, pareho tayo. Araw-araw, takot na takot ako. Kasi in my family, it was death all around, uh, one after another. So parang ngayon, ang trauma ko ay, parang, Lord, kaya, ako naman, kailan mo kukunin? Pero sabi niya, I learned now that the trauma does not have to destroy us. The trauma can help us towards healing and hope. So yung sugat ko po, yun ang dahilan kung bakit patuloy ako nagsisikap. Kayo po. Ano yung mga sugat? Anong epekto sa'yo ng sugat ng buhay mo? Nawawalan ka ng pag-asa? 
nawawalan ka ng sigla, nawawalan ka ng kaibigan, nawawalan ka ng pamilya. Anong epekto sa iyo ng mga sugat na pinagdadaanan mo sa buhay? Does it help you to be more compassionate? Does it help you to be more hopeful? Does it help you to build a better life compared to the past? Trauma, it can be turned around. Ang maganda po sa trauma, hindi po siya sakit. Ang trauma, sugat, na pwedeng maghilom. Oh, I'd like to correct myself. May mga sugat na hindi talaga maghihilom. At ang sugat na yon na hindi naghihilom, may purpose po yun. Because in your vulnerability, in your tenderness and soft vulnerability, that's where you can grow. Ang, ang analogy po dyan ay yung puno. I'd like to end with this imagery. Ang puno po, yung kanyang bark, the bark of the tree is hard and lifeless. But it's hard. It's protective. Nasaan ang buhay ng puno? Hindi doon sa nakabalot. Ang buhay na puno ay ano? Ang nasa loob. Soft and tender, vulnerable, but that's where life pros eh, prospers and happens. Not in the bark that is hard and lifeless, but inside, in the soft and tender side of the tree, that's where life and nutrients grow and bear fruit. Like the crustaceans, ito, okay, nagamit din nilang analogy ng mga psychologists. Like the crab, for example. The crab has its shell. Hard, protective shell. But life of a crab, the life of a crab is inside. The crustaceans are alive because they are soft inside. It's not because they are hard in the outside. In other words, your wounds are in fact your moments and occasions where you can grow more because there is possibility and there is life there. Yung hidwaan yung mag-asawa, yan ang simula ng inyong pag-aayos. Yung sugat na inyong pinagdaanan, yan ang simula ng pagsasaayos ng inyong buhay. So don't don't eliminate the wounds. Don't despise the wounds because those wounds serve a purpose. It gives you tenderness to be compassionate and it gives you tenderness so that you can grow and build on it. Kapag ka ang buhay natin ay tumigas na ang puso, wala nang pag-asa. Pero habang sugatan, at habang may dumadaloy na dugo, ibig sabihin noon, buhay ka pa. Ang isang taong nasusugatan, ibig sabihin niyan, buhay ka pa. May dugo pa eh. At yan po yung huling alaala ko sa nanay ko. And let me end again. Dami ko ng ending. Inahawakan ko po yung kamay ng nanay ko nung namatay siya. Ang isang detalye ng kamay ng nanay ko, I remember this, 2010 ito, pero ang lino ng alaala ko. Hawak-hawak ko yung kamay niya. Siyempre, matigas na patay na yun. Tapos, nakita ko yung... Pareho po kasi kami ng daliri ng nanay ko. Pareho pong maganda ang aming kuko. <laughs> so, inahawakan ko yung kamay niya, tsaka yung kuko niya. Uh, yung kuko niya kasi uh, maiksi noon. At yung habang hinahawak ko yung kamay niya, yun yung last image ko nung bago siya, bago siya nawala na talaga, yun yung kamay niya, yung very ano sa... <laughs> ako po, lagi akong uh, mukha akong si Raulo. Pag nag-nail cutter po ako, naalala ko nanay ko. <laughs> Kasi sinasabi ko sa sarili ko, yung daliri ng nanay ko, hindi natutubo yung kuko. Kahit minsan naiirita ako na mag-nail cutter, pero sinasabi ko sa sarili ko, uh, 
Ah, kaya ka mo kailangan mag nail cutter kasi buhay ka pa. Tumutubo pa yung buhok mo at ang kuko mo. So okay ba yan? As long as it's, it's alive, even if it's painful, minsan kailangan mo talagang ano yun eh, uh, yung mahaba yung kuko mo eh. But you have to clip it. But it reminds you that you're still alive. Ganun din po sa mga sugat ng ating buhay. Hanggat may sugat, ibig sabihin niyan, buhay ka pa. Matakot ka kung hindi ka na nasusugatan. Matakot ka kung hindi na tumutubo ang kuko mo. Matakot ka kapag wala nang gumagalaw sa puso mo. Dahil ibig sabihin noon, tapos na lahat. Habang may sugat, at habang may dugo na dumadanak, habang may nararamdaman ka, habang may mga pagbabago, pasalamat ka. May pag-asa pa yan. There's still hope. No wonder the wounds of Jesus never heal to tell us that in His wounds, we will be healed. We will have hope. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. I invite you, my dear friends, let us pray for healing. If you want to close your eyes and bow your head, let us beg the Lord tonight to heal us from our trauma, from our wounds, from our pains, from our hurts and sufferings. Let us ask the Lord by your wounds, Lord, heal us. Help us accept our woundedness. Help us to appreciate our vulnerability. Allow us to appreciate the wounds, even the pains that they cause us. Because they remind us that we are still alive and there is still hope for us. Lord, heal us from our wounds. Give us peace in our heart. Do not allow the past to terrorize us to this day. Lead us, O Lord, to accept that the past is past and that today is a new day. Help us, Lord, to appreciate and understand that you are God of the present, and that you are God who lives, and you want us to live. Heal us from our hurts. Heal us from our wounds. Heal us from our brokenness. Give us hope, O Lord, and by your cross, by your wounds, give us hope. We end our recollection with a song. Kailan titigil 
sa mundo be with you and may our loving God bless you and your family may the Lord heal you and give you wholeness and completeness recovery and restoration in your life the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit Amen maraming salamat po sa inyong pagdalo let us journey in the Holy Week together may burger po sa likod uh, sana makabusog sa inyo. God bless you all. Meron lang tayong konting picture dito. Pumunta ako dito and then magi picture lang tayo para may souvenir tayo for our uh, Lenten recollection. So maraming salamat po ulit sa inyong pagdalo. Tayo po tayo. Andito tayo.